Now for this week's Gotcha, a very special edition. By now, we all know that right-wing media fixture Bill O'Reilly was ousted this week from his position as the Fox News Channel's top draw. The decision came down as advertisers continued to pull out of Mr. O'Reilly's show, fleeing the fallout from a New York Times expose about the various sexual harassment allegations leveled against him over a 15-year span. O'Reilly, of course, denied any wrongdoing. I won't expound on the details of the allegations against Mr. O'Reilly, nor the millions of dollars that Fox News paid out over the years to silence his accusers. We'll get to that in a bit. No, I'm here with a different and admittedly personal take on the O'Reilly ouster. Because for 21 very long years at Fox News, Mr. O'Reilly demonized almost every group that wasn't made up of straight, white, Christian, conservative men. It was his bread and butter. Many of them are ill-educated and have tattoos on their foreheads. And then, you know, how are you going to, and, and I hate to be generalized about it, but it's true. The white establishment is now the minority. And the voters, many of them, feel that the, this economic system is stacked against them and they want stuff. I didn't hear a word she said. I was, <laughs> I was looking at the James Brown wig. Summing up, left wants power taken away from the white establishment. They want a profound change in the way America is run. Slaves that worked there were well fed and had decent lodgings provided by the government. That's right. He said all of that. And with fighting words like that, is it any surprise that Mr. O'Reilly made a special target of yours truly? Corruption is a dishonest purveyor of information, a man who could not care less about reporting what's true. Al Sharpton has the nerve to insult the American police community. Al Sharpton is in business with people who put out entertainment harmful to children. Sharpton only cares about his own self-aggrandizement. And if he has to stoke racial hatred to get that, that's what Sharpton will do. I know this man. Some years ago, I was on Mr. O'Reilly's show expressing my displeasure with the rights misappropriation of Dr. King's legacy. I hope he's watching now. Because one of Dr. King's most famous quotes is as follows. The arc of the universe, the moral universe, is long, but it bends toward justice. In this case, that's a polite way to frame it. For a less cordial expression, I'm going to turn to someone the right won't touch, Brother Malcolm X, who talked controversially about, quote, chickens coming home to roost. Both men were essentially saying the same thing, or as we would say in Brooklyn, payback's a mother. Mr. O'Reilly, you had the highest rated primetime cable program in the country for several years. You did this by flirting with white nationalism, and as long as your bosses were happy, you appeared to be untouchable. But as you of all people should know, money talks. And this week, it told even you to shut up. So while you made a great on-air foil for all these years, I've got to step aside and give the props to three distinct forces that did something I and others couldn't. One, to karma. Two, to capitalism. And three, the brave women who came forward and may continue to do so. Because this week, all three got you. And when we come back, we'll learn more about how they did it. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.